Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the 2015 Playoffs Round of 32 and we have a match coming up for you today between on the blue side Team Amazon or er, Amazon oh I'm starting this cast off right Amazon Amazon that's right the f name's so punny I can't even pronounce it Amazon of course allows you to buy things online like this beautiful mic I am screwing up their name into <laughs> um, the charity they are playing for is Child's Play Child's Play brings children in hospital and domestic abuse centers uh, the joy of gaming helped those kids uh, one during their time uh, in those places not be bored out of their mind uh, but also get past whatever uh, tra traumatic experience they had to end up in a place like that and help them reconnect with their uh, uh, their youth and their childlike um, enjoyment of things and distance themselves from the harsh realities they've been through. So a fantastic charity there, a noble goal, and that is also the charity that the red side is playing for. And the red side, of course, is Twitch. Twitch, uh, the gaming-specific streaming service of Justin TV, which I am not streaming this on. I am streaming this on YouTube because I am a noob. <laughs> Twitch, obviously, the premier site for streaming games. And I have no logistical reason for not streaming there other than, meh, I already had a YouTube setup. So, anyways, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into the Pikman of this game. We see, coming out from the red side, uh, the bands are Vi, Fizz, and Caitlyn. Um, and for the blue side, the bands are Singed, Syndra, and Sivir. So, uh, very notable, the very first pick here for the blue side is that Sejuani. That is definitely uh, the number one comfort pick for Iron Sheep here. Uh, to lock that Sejuani in and get that early on and make sure that they're uh, comfortable with that champion. Have some good power, excuse me, some good power coming out of the jungle. Um, with the very minor nerf uh, to Cinderhulk, uh, in my opinion, it seems to at least have just sort of taken the uh, lesser viable tank junglers and made them just back to be not really meta anymore uh, while keeping the more really strong tank junglers just on the uh, level playing field here. So Sejuani obviously is one of the premier tank junglers uh, going to be very strong even with those Cinderbolt changes um, and especially since this is a player we're going to see that has a lot of comfort on that champion in particular. I expect to see a lot of power coming out of the uh, blue side jungle here. And despite the Caitlyn ban, which of course was in fact uh, targeted here uh, at Stanford, uh, the ADC for the red side, they did leave his uh, other pick, which I think is actually uh, played a little bit more frequently by him, uh, the Jinx pickup here. Uh, it seems to be that and Caitlyn, uh, interestingly enough for a lot of people, <laughs> seem to go together given their character wars. Um, but yeah, so Jinx, certainly a very comfort pick for him. Uh, not going to be uh, thrown off by that Caitlyn band too much at all. Going to be very comfortable with that Jinx. And I'm interested to see how she fares up in this Callista lane, especially with that Morgana pickup as the support. Uh, possibly, of course, that could be a flex pick Morgana, but uh, with the ultimate from Callista being able to throw Morgana in to a chunk of enemies who are then not able to instantly react because they're knocked up, gives Morgana plenty of time to start those soul shackles off with her ultimate, actually get people locked down with that, and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to see, even before she completes this Zonia's Hourglass, her able to actually get the second proc off of those soul shackles and bring a lot of important CC to her team. Which, on top of the Sejuani, I mean, you've already got quite the wombo combo there. Throw Morgana in, knock a whole bunch of people up, throw the Sejuani while they're CC'd, throw that ultimate out there, lock them down, give that enough time by the time that the Sejuani ultimate wears off, Morgana's soul shackles proc, and then all of a sudden the entire red side team has been blown up. So we already see quite a lot of play potential here um, coming out of this blue side. And it looks like that 
might be the uh, Cho'Gath and the Zed coming in here. Given how they were picked in sync, I was expecting an instant lock-in after, but it looks like they're going to take an extra second to think about this. Given that they don't know the mid lane matchup yet, um, that could be something uh, that they want to change on the Zed for something a little bit safer. And it looks like, in fact, that will be with the um, ability to just throw Morgana into the middle of a team that is then CC'd and again follow that up with Sejuani's CC. Um, I mean, we're just adding Wombo on top of Wombo here because now you're just going to throw the Oriana ball in the middle of that and throw down the ultimate from Oriana there. Going to be a lot of damage if they can get this combo actually to go off on the right targets here. But let's talk about uh, Cho'Gath for a moment here. I'm very glad to see Cho'Gath coming back into the scene here. Bursting out of here now that there's uh, a lot more tankier champions being picked up here. He's making quite a bit of resurgence as his ultimate gives him plenty of tank, tank ability here and a lot of true damage as well to even if he opts to go full tank and doesn't go like the off AP hybrid tank. Um, you know, he, he can still do a lot of burst damage to a squishy target who comes within range. Um, and in particular, he is going to be very strong against this Maokai as uh, when he turns on that E, he just never turns it off. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you do want to toggle that to control your waves a little bit better, but uh, for the most part, you're not really using those uh, cooldowns very much uh, on Cho'Gath, so those, uh, the passive from Maokai is negated quite a bit, so this should be a fairly favorable matchup in the top lane for that Cho'Gath. And we are going to see the final lock-in for the red side is going to be that Vladimir in the mid lane uh, to try and tango with that Orianna. But, uh, I mean, dodging those shockwaves is going to be very pesky. Orianna is going to have to be very judicious with holding that ultimate until the pool from Vladimir is down and she knows she can actually land that ultimate in the right area. But we do see Vladimir actually opting not to go with Ghost, it seems, right now just hovering that flash at least. Uh, I believe he is going to keep that locked in. And uh, that should be a little bit of a different um, flavor to this Vladimir than we're used to seeing. So uh, possibly going to be uh, waiting for an opportunity to flash in, throw down that ultimate on people right as the damage starts to come in and wait for perhaps uh, the Maokai to uh, hop on in with his CC, start chaining his CC. And once you get, get that going, then Zack is going to be able to target uh, his uh, launch properly, land on the right people, get some good CC, and then see uh, Jinx's damage will just start piling on during all that. All those auto attacks, all those Qs with that AoE auto damage is going to do a lot of dam uh, damage to even the front line of this blue side team. So with the Vladimir ultimate thrown down at the start of that, the Hemo Plague of course going to ramp up that damage quite a bit, going to really enable Jinx. Typically when we think about Enable the AD carry team comps. We think about more like a Lulu. Um, we think more of uh, uh, Nunu jungle. Stuff like that. But this very much is a protect and enable the AD carry composition as well. Even with that Vladimir. Who's going to be doing a very strong amount of damage. That shouldn't be uh, discounted by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but Jinx is definitely going to be the very consistent DPS source here. And she's going to want to be looking to combo her main uh, output of DPS with that Hemo Plague from Vlad to really make the most of it. While they have the CC they do from the Let's uh, Bounce from this Zac and this uh, the Maokai CC that they can chain together here. Uh, additionally, they do have, of course, the great Queen of Disengage here, Janet. Um, also going to be able to throw that shield, give Jinx a little extra AD for when these fights break out as we're talking about. But hold that thought, because we haven't even mentioned Zack yet. I briefly mentioned that. Uh, of course, he can add to some CC potential. But Zack, everyone, let's give a hand to Zack actually showing up in the game. Awesome. Fantastic. It's been so long, it feels, since we've seen uh, Zack's consistently played. I am very excited to see how this Zack will work out in the jungle for this red side here. He, of course... Um, is going to be looking uh, to get a lot of that uh, tankiness early. He's going to be one of those Cinder Hulk champions who continues to go Cinder Hulk now and just maximize that amount of AP, or er, AP, HP, um, and try and 
uh, sustain through that jungle route quickly as possible, uh, picking up those blobs that he drops to keep rolling. And uh, as soon as he feels uh, he's got the levels uh, or somebody's a little out of position, he's going to launch from deep in the jungle into that mid lane, uh, at least as is typical for the mid lane, uh, for Zach to launch from, say, the Razor Beaks camp all the way to the middle of mid lane and land some immediate CC onto or perhaps a little bit more forward out of position mid laner. So Oriana, typically a lot safer of a mid laner. She looks to scale up into the late game, be able to become a huge monster threat with that ultimate land, a lot of damage on multiple targets in the late game. So we shouldn't see her pushing too hard in the early game. Um, so hopefully she'd be able to be a little safe against that Zack engage. But also hopefully not, because we really want to see Zack succeed. Let's be honest here. We all want to see Zack succeed. <laughs> um, but we'll have to wait and see how this works out, of course. Uh, Jinx uh, going to be taking all, all of these champions, I should say. Going to be taking the standard uh, summoner spells here again. Aside from that Vladimir that opted to go for the Flash instead of the Ghost here. Perhaps a little bit safer of a summoner spell choice there. Uh, perhaps showing a little bit of nerves coming in uh, to this uh, match here. Now that we are in the playoffs, Flash, of course, is a little bit safer than Ghost, even when you can pool. Uh, you're going to, if you Ghost that out, you're going to be a little more precarious of a situation because they have time to see what's happening, time to react, time to try and throw down some skill shots to stop you. Um, Cho'Gath, of course, just throw out the Q right when you're going to come out of your pool and you'll have nowhere to go. So taking that flash a little bit safer for this Vladimir, going to be able to get him uh, in and out of sticky situations a little bit better than that more risky ghost would. So I reorder everything really quickly here. Come on, there we go. All right, so um, looks like standard starts from both sides so far here, from what I can see. Sometimes we do see uh, that Maokai opt for a full sustain start uh, with that flask instead of the Doran's Ring, but in a more passive lane like this with a Cho'Gath, I think that Doran's Ring is a bit, a bit of a better choice here because you're going to want to spam those abilities out a little bit more uh, in order to wave clear under your turret. Cho'Gath, of course, if he levels E first, those are two very important wards. Hold on, we'll get back into that top lane matchup in a moment. But these two wards that were thrown out, I believe this one wasn't seen. This one was seen by the blue side. Uh, so they're going to try it for a sneaky invade up right here. But unfortunately for them, this is a uh, going to be spotted out here. And they're going to be able to back away in time. Cho got thrown down the Q, does catch on to Janna here. And then the Morgana Q lands as well. First blood onto the Morgana. Wow, that is unfortunate. They spotted that out coming too far and away and just simply did not react in time. Very unfortunate. And Vladimir now coming down to try and uh, hold this position, get a little extra vision for his team. Not really able, going to be able to accomplish much here. Probably should run over there and try and throw down a ward, a deep ward into the blue side jungle so they can at least get something for losing that first blood. But unfortunately, Malachi's trinket already down right now. He did trinket up that tri brush area. And he's going to be looking to start Krugs. So, very unfortunate for this red side. That is a painful start. And it looks like this blue side's looking to make it even more painful with that ward there. They do know this is going down. And actually, uh, that's three members. So they're getting a little uh, confident here. Trying to harass that Zack down, make him lose his passive at the start, but not really going to be able to do much for it. He's still going to be able to get that level 2, and they will be forced away. So Jwani, after getting her level 2 as well, is going to show up in this area. Beautiful Q from Morgana again, and there comes Sajwani using that level 2, forces the Flash out of the Jinx already. So that's a Summers, both summer spells down for this Jinx in the bot lane, and that uh, exhaust was already used. Another Q onto this Jinx, Morgana, seemingly doing her best impression of an Urgot using those heat-seeking Qs. And again, onto the Jinx, 
This this Morgana Glistalane out of control. Morgana already with a double kill. And that's gonna be one more hop and she will get it. She has to burn the flash and drop the mini negro in this brush, but she's gonna be just fine as Zach is all the way in base. She'll just throw that spear to get herself over the wall, no problem. And that is already three kills to the red side or to the blue side in this bottom lane. This is this does not bode well <laughs> for the red side. Not the best start. And you, you gotta wonder, I mean, this is gonna be a best of five, of course. So even if this game were to just uh, spiral out of control because of that early uh, advantage here in the bottom lane, the main damage to this could be the psychological effect. If Jinx and Janna start playing uh, as if they've got no hope here, and start playing overly defensively, start playing overly cautiously, and don't make the plays they need to make to make it to that late game where Jinx is going to be able to put on those carry pants and just uh, make it through and compensate for the start here. Well, then uh, that's going to be a real hindrance overall for this team, and especially since that can that will reinforce the fact um, that there's bad play here if you start to uh, worry about your play and then perform worse because of those concerns. Then that could snowball into possibly the second and or third game in this series. So just got to play a little cautious here. Make sure they play safe. Only right now uh, the Vamp Scepter onto Callista. So she will have a little extra sustain, but nothing insane here. Almost like just some passive health bots. The only thing they really have to be concerned about is that level advantage. That is distinctly in favor of the blue side, but whenever those levels are the same, there shouldn't be too much of a difference between these bot lanes, so... Uh, with the right play here, they should be alright. Beautiful sidestep there by the Maokai from what should have been a point-blank Q there. Very well played. Chogat does manage to land on this one, takes a turret shot for his trouble though. Maokai looking to lock him down in the turret range, but not able to do so. However, uh, they will be able to get him with that red buff slow. No, maybe he's going to make it out alive. If action happens in the bot lane, we will come right back to it. But Chogath, being a hero, making it out alive there. And back as we come down to the bottom lane, going to be flashing and walking back. Oh no, I can't believe that Morgan or that Jana turned back at the last second there to try and, I guess, throw down something, thinking she was dead to the rend already. Let's go back and watch that full engagement here in the bottom lane, because I know we looked away to see what was going on in the top lane. Unfortunately, Zach not able to make it happen there. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> see what we can uh, see here. Looks like Morgana just going into that bush, looking for that Q, and she doesn't find it, actually. So the turnaround engage from Janna, the levels are essentially even right now. But Jinx is taking so low right now. And then the level's getting out of control. Level 4 hits. They force a flash. Janna perhaps getting candy caned a little bit by those minions, screwing up her pathing a little bit for her. Makes her walk back into range, get that last auto attack, and unfortunately... Uh, or rather get the last tick uh, of the pool and Jinx coming up to try and last hit she can't do that right now this is an insane bot lane you can't go in you just gotta surrender that CS you gotta not just give up the fact that you're not gonna be able to get a little bit of uh, experience there until they push up to your turret you can't try and do that well just a, a little mistake there by this Jinx overextending after her support was killed Giving up another kill, so that's 5-0 oh for the red side, uh, excuse me, for the blue side. All the kills going on the red side, uh, going on the red side's bot lane. So, I mean, if you, if you could have planned a be better, uh, start for this blue side team, I don't know what it would look like, because you absolutely want to put that Jinx behind. And if you can get that Callista ahead, then she's able to get the Runon's Hurricane without having to worry about, oh, you know, I'm concerned if I get this, if I won't have the damage behind it to back it up. If she gets, you know, two kills and three assists, funny enough to say, as the ADC, the support actually has more of the kills here. But uh, if she is able to get that much uh, uh, power ahead of time, 
then she's going to be able to sacrifice getting that rune on Hurricane and not have to give up any power. So many, uh, so much damage onto that Jinx and then the Ren taking her down to like a quarter of health. And Oriana, very aggressive here, just walking into the bush, no fear. Knows that there's uh, support coming in here, and that will be Vladimir. No, gonna be safe here by the Zach. No, the flash from Oriana, not gonna be enough. <laughs> Though eventually the Fed uh, Morgana will take him out. That was a beautiful play from uh, Vladimir to keep himself in control of the situation. Morgana is quite low, but that pool doing a lot of damage because of how head this bot lane is. So it should have been a much more favorable trade here for this red side. It actually doesn't result in too much for them, only getting one kill for all their troubles here. They are going to look to try and get something done in this mid lane, but again, Morgana is so far ahead right now. Uh, with her damage for what she should be as a support, uh, she's able to throw down that pool and do a lot of damage to those minions, prevent that wave clear, or bring that wave clear to prevent that uh, turret from going down early. Vladimir now, though, with that Hextech revolver, revolver, of course, re completed already, going to be able to uh, theoretically at least sustain through that lane without too much trouble here. And Oriana uh, opting to go for the Forbidden Idol first. Uh, not going to have too much of a pack, uh, punch pack um, with those uh, moves. As you see, Sejuani taking low by the but going to have to go on back. Yeah, Oriana definitely going to have to play it very safe in that mid lane. Uh, Vlad should be able to start uh, bullying her in. Here we go again in the bottom lane, forcing both summoner he heals immediately, or excuse me, summoner spells heal and flash out of Jinx immediately in this bottom lane. Jinx again, just going for last hits, you, you have to give them up at this point in time. It's simply not doable to try and go there. I mean, I know it hurts. I've been in those positions, of course, but I know we all have been in that position where you're behind, you want to get back in this, you feel like every CS you miss is another opportunity. Uh, for yourself to get further and further behind and you, you can't let that happen but you, you, what you, you really can't let happen is hold on you can't let the Sejuani ult into the Oriana ult happen is what you can't let happen and that's gonna be Vladimir going down there's a kill on Oriana gonna help her actually get ahead of her build here actually get this Morello Nong Kong completed now uh, perhaps even try and get that uh, mid lane for another actually just gonna rotate down the dragon and to clean that dragon on up, uh, get that first dragon of the game over to this blue side here. Yeah, Jinx, I mean, certainly we all have been in that situation, and it's very painful to have to just give up that CS, let that experience go to waste, but, you know, there are times where that's what you gotta do, because it's either that or gonna be giving up the kill, so Morgana throwing out a key there just to deter some people from coming in, that will be the first dragon of the game going over to the blue side here, getting them that uh, bonus AD and AP. More importantly, starting off uh, the slippery slope here towards that fifth dragon. Fairly early on here, around, about right on time here at the 10 minute mark. But since it's already 7 and 1, already a 5k plus gold lead. You gotta wonder uh, if that's already too much of a deficit to come back from. Luckily, for this uh, red side, hold that thought actually, because Vladimir going way deeper, and that's with. With the ultimate, going to be plenty of damage to finish off Oriana. But that will not be the kill coming out. Zach's going to immediately think better of going in on that side of Wani. Um, but, I mean, that's a one for one. That will be worth it, even with the assist coming out on a side Wani. So, technically, in favor uh, of this uh, blue side here. A red side at this point just needs to trade kills evenly to get themselves back in the game to try and lower that gold disparity, at least uh, in ratio. Uh, to how much gold there is out there trying to lower that disparity, so. Overall, a favorable exchange for them here in that mid lane. Yeah, Jinx playing a little bit safer now, using that Q to farm those rockets, but Janna now actually stepping a little too far forward. Gonna be forced to flash as well. 
once there were a few shots uh, and she had a whole bunch of arrows sticking out of her she feared the rend and just immediately flashed a good play there actually <laughs> Morgana being a pest gonna zone that jinx away proc that spell thieves very very good annoying play there as a as a support main myself, I appreciate that <laughs> quite a bit. Always good to interrupt the recall, get a little gold for doing so as well. Feels real nice. So that's gonna be the bot lane outer turret going down. First turret of the game, now down, and uh, there goes Calista immediately spawning out. Janna in that bush on the bot side. And he's gonna be just jumping immediately forward, using that ability to kite around and taking quite a chunk out of Jinx, Jinx with that run here. Zach now in the area, gonna be forcing Callista Morgana to back away a little bit. Play slightly safer here, but Naka taking in quite a bit of damage. There's the ultimate from Cho to force him away. Not quite enough damage yet, but if Maokai tries to hang around in that top lane, uh, he might be taken out by Cho if he can land a uh, good Q or two here. He's actually forced to throw down the ultimate just to hang around. And now he's actually going to just go back here. Does not have that teleport available. So this is going to be a painful back timing for him. Um, Morgana actually able to black shield herself as Zack comes in. Janna gonna try and come in and save him with that ultimate, but Sejuani gonna lock him down long enough to where that will be the passive proc, and they should be able to clean up those little chunks of Zack. And there it is, that is the kill eventually coming into this Callista. And Morgana, no fear of stepping forward to clear out that pink ward, just gonna eat the zap, not care at all. Show we got going around. And that's the flash ultimate there from Oriana. Gonna result in a kill there actually specifically on the Cho'Gath. A great run there from the Cho'Gath with that top lane pushed up now. Uh, just gonna meander down uh, and Vladimir perhaps suspecting it going out to ward or something like that. Stepped a little bit too far out and got caught by the Cho'Gath. He was able to silence him, prevent him from using that flash. And then it was just simply too late at that point and he was already done. So, unfortunately for Vladimir, that's going to be another kill on to him. And right now, uh, starting to look again a little out of control at this point. Near 10k gold lead at the 15 minute mark. You gotta start to wonder at what point um, does this become an unwinnable game for the red side. Zach opting to try and rush that um, line. We are going to see Vladimir. Actually, Cho'Gath wants this fight. Going to throw down those cooldowns, scare Vladimir off, and then back away himself. Um, but yes, we see uh, Zach here opting to get that Spectral's Cow first, trying to uh, build into the Spirit Visage as soon as possible, get that Expert Regen up, uh, and even before he gets that Cinder Bolt builds, but Tanking quite a bit of turret shots there. A little bit of a misplay there. I think the minions were a little bit far further forward than they are. Gonna force the backs to come out. And actually, Morgana being respected now <laughs> after causing a lot of pain a few times already. And we see Morgana uh, with that 4 0 and 4 stats. Gonna be getting that needlessly large rod build uh, to start heading up towards that Zonia's. But that's going to be so much damage coming out from that support Morgana. As we see, oh, excuse me. Poor me, all the action's going down and I missed all of it because I am just so bored by the action, apparently. Um, that is a flash cue from Morgana. This Morgana has such heat-seeking cues. I am so impressed. That has to be a ban coming out. In the next game, this Morgana cannot be allowed to go through again. Perhaps the first pick, but cannot be allowed to end up on this blue side's team again. 
would absolutely be a nightmare if that happened because she has made so many plays with those Qs. Again, another Q on to Jinx. Now with the ultimate taking away, Jinx gonna be forced to flash, but she's flashed right into a, a wall. Back against the wall, gonna go down. Poor Firecracker Jinx, never stood a chance. Wow, I mean, so yeah, this this Morgana is already building um, into that zone he's here to try and get that, get herself in a position as quickly as possible to do the maximum amount of power in those team fights. Actually get that uh, ultimate proc onto as many people as she can. And with a 4, 0, oh, and 6 stats to back up that build, she's getting to that Zonius way quicker than she should be able to. And Cho'Gath now looking to do a little counter jungling. As you see already on 6 stacks here, so not going to need to use the ultimate to get that down. And Zach being in this bottom lane, not going to have any hopes of smiling that away. Callista in the 3v2, going to pick up a kill. On to Janna. Again, another Morgana Q locking her down. This, this, uh, I mean, this game, it's, it's never over. I've seen, I've seen way worse, uh, situations have comebacks occur. But I, I haven't seen them often. <laughs> That's gonna be the first turret of the game going down for the red side here. Giving them some very much needed glo global gold, but Shoga. Uh, should be able to pick up the kill onto this Maokai here. One more auto should do it. Actually going to use that beast. Just a, a little bit of BM there. Has a six stack, six stack still. Uh, but there comes the teleport into the bottom lane here. They're going to try and take this inhibitor turret right now. This is exactly what you want to do if you're the blue side. Make sure there's no opportunity for that Jinx. To scale up here and actually gonna jump right back in gets the Oriana ultimate down results in a kill onto that Jan taking a lot of damage from the turret but another Morgana Q and that's gonna be the Vlad going down to the Rand yes Jinx will get the kill onto the Cho'Gath though Cho'Gath not tanking quite enough yet and that will be the inhibitor turret saved just barely not dying to the burn too 20 HP on that Oriana but Callista is too scary. The Nightmare Callista, 8 0 and 4, simply can't be trifled with. Those very low blinking red health bars uh, can't be taken advantage of because Callista is in the area. She is a one man zoning crew here. One woman zoning crew, I should say. Yeah, I mean. All, all the credit to this Callista, too, to be able to certainly capitalize on these opportunities that have been made for her by Morgana. But I really feel like the the reason Callista has gone so out of control isn't because of uh, the Callista, the ADC for the blue side on Callista. It's because of that Morgana. That Morgana has set up so many uh, kills in and out of bot lane, out in mid lane as well. Got Oriana her first kill. Those Qs have been absolutely deadly. Another Q, taking out half of uh, the other support's entire HP with just a simple QW combo. And now, gonna throw down the ultimate, gonna Zonius, gonna land it, there's the Wombo we were talking about during Champion Select, and it's over, another two kills down. That will be the triple kill going over to Oriana. And now we have reached the point in the game where everyone on blue side is officially fed. <laughs> There's no weak links available at this point. And you see the turret going down in the mid lane as well. Shogath pushing that uh, inner turret in the top lane. Should be able to get it here as it will be unchallenged as they're going to for uh, be forced to try and defend this middle lane. Which is already so low, Callista should be able to take it out with just a couple more auto attacks. And she is able to do so, so uh, that will be the top lane inner turret going down simultaneously as well. And the blue side will be able to pull right back to the dragon pit. Beautiful flash over the Q is able to land uh, the chemo plague onto the two key targets, but there is no follow up damage to capitalize on the ignite. 
Gonna force Morgana to take down and go down. The Let's Bounce gonna be thrown out from Zack. But the CC is not going to be enough to really create any opportunities here. And that will be Maokai going down. The flash forward on the Callista. Going to get her into position. And Jinx not allowed to go anywhere. The Ori Oriana Ultimate pulling her right back. And now that is a 3 for 1 in favor of this blue side. And with that Callista still up, these are definitely going to be some inhibitors going down. Those death timers are fairly low as it is still only 22 minutes in the game, despite being a 24 and 5 game. Uh, but that will be the middle lane inhibitor going down right now. Lista looking to rotate up to that top lane, but gonna think better of it. Dragon again is gonna be spawning in 5 seconds here. So they will most likely clean up that blue buff, clean up that set, that third dragon, get the passive movement speed as well. And with that, I mean, 10-0 and 7 Callisto with that Bork, with that IE, looking to go into her, um... Oh, goodness, my brain. Uh, Runon's Hurricane here. He's actually looking to jump forward, does land the run! On to Jinx to get that slow, and even with the barrier, excuse me, even with the shield from Janna, not going to be enough. And Vladimir just happened to be in the area, not going to be able to get out with his life. Even with the flash, uh, the Miss Oriana, or excuse me, the Miss Morgana Q, the Miss Sejuani Ultimate, not enough. Janna goes down too, and that is GG. That is the game. Going over this blue side. Insane game ends 20k ahead, 27 to 5, three dragons unanswered. You just got to put this out of your mind if you are the red side team here. I mean, going into the next game, remember, this is, of course, a best of three. So for this Twitch team, they just need to not think about this, put this out of their mind, relax, reset, say, okay, that Morgana was the thing that created a lot of plays. Callista got really far ahead, Nightmare Callista happened, and this is what happens when Nightmare Callista happened. The, uh, Oriana didn't go too insane, 5 and 3, did have 11 assists of course, participated in a lot of kills, don't get me wrong, but on her own wasn't destroying that lane. Cho'Gath, only 3, 1, and 3 throughout the whole game. Wasn't challenged, uh, but does uh, need to uh, scale up as well. So while he was able to scale up fairly unchallenged, keep those stacks maintained, that's not a huge concern. The concern in this game was the Callista, was the Morgana. So if they ban out that Morgana, again, I said it earlier, I stand by, I think that Callista isn't the fear, the fear is the Morgana. So if they can ban out that Morgana next game, perhaps even if they are particularly intimidated by that, try and first pick that Callista away, maybe that's something they'll be able to deal with here. Um, just really quickly... Actually, <laughs> we do have a uh, word, as you're seeing on the screen, they are actually going to just forfeit the second game as well. The demoralization, that's very unfortunate. I really think that they could have come back in, that, in a second game and pulled a reverse sweep here. But I, I definitely understand the demoralizing when you're against a 1307 a Callista. Uh, when you're 20k behind in a 24 minute game, I understand that pain. Uh, just looking at the scores really quickly again, Callista, 22k, 23k damage. Gosh, almost more than the, I believe that's more than the entire team combined. No, it's not, but it's, it's darn near close. So, unfortunately it looks like, uh, Team Twitch will just forfeit the second game here, uh, and give that... Uh, the series to Amazon, Amazon here. They will be going on to the uh, round of 16 playoffs here. Again, unfortunate uh, that the team for Twitch was a little dismayed, but as we get into these long series, you got to be able to bounce back after heavy losses like that, put it out of your mind, and just say, okay, what happened, happened. Switch up the pick ban a little bit and move forward. But unfortunately, it looks like... Uh, the mental wear and tear of that first game is a little too much to overcome, so that will be the series going over to Amazon Hamazon, who we will be seeing next week in uh, the round of 16. So if you want to stay tuned to all the uh, upcoming matches 
all the schedules, see who's advanced to the round of 16, sees who's paired with whom. You can always check out AfterHoursGaming.tv. And they, of course, will be posting all that information there. All of the uh, streams will be posted there as well. And if you want to stay tuned to this channel as well, we are going to try and get another uh, series casted today as well. I believe at 2 o'clock I will give you guys more information about that as I get it available here. Um, but all of the this match uh, and all matches will be uploaded to this channel as well. So if you want to stay tuned to this channel, of course, every Sunday I will be streaming live and uploading matches afterwards to this channel. And thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a good time, and I will see you guys next time.